everyone's coming from tonight too. So please um, put your location in the chat function and say hello. Over to you, Carl. Thanks, Astrid. Good evening, everybody. Uh, great to have you here. And especially great to have our old friend here, Peter von Noonan of the Portugal Company. Peter, how are you? Hey, Carl. Hey, Astrid. Thanks for having me. I'm very fine. Uh, enjoying um, all of Portugal, as, as normal, as you know. And uh, yeah, doing very good. Thank you. And uh, a happy recent birthday to you. When I said old friend, I didn't mean it in a bad way. Um, just a little, <laughs> little bit familiar there. But uh, we, were, we were commenting on how marvellous and how young you look. Oh, uh, come on. Great, it's, great. Um, it's, uh, it's good. And um, I'm happy to, um, to have a little chat with, uh, with you, Carl, and with, uh, with everyone uh, online to answer all questions regarding finding the right property and um, making you all moving uh, to Portugal. Fantastic. So, so before we get formal with that and a little presentation, tell me what you've been up to. Um, I, I understand you've been traveling. Uh, people will see to my uh, on screen right, the Barcelos Cock Hall. I think you've been up that way in Portugal, haven't you? You've been in yes. the north. Actually, actually, I was there yesterday. Barcelos is a very uh, nice. Uh, it's, I thought it was a small town, but it's, it's not a small town. It's, uh, it's a little city i can say uh, close to porto in the in the north of uh, portugal and um we were visiting uh, a very nice uh, project uh, just outside uh, barcelos for uh, for our clients and of course we combined it with uh, with a couple of days uh, visiting uh, the peneda jerez national park it's uh, the first uh, national park in portugal it's uh, close to the Spanish border. It's really beautiful. It's uh, something every one of us have to uh, have to go there. It's really uh, worth the trip because it's, uh, I think it's an hour and a half or so from uh, from Porto. So it's quite a ride, but uh, yeah, it's very lovely. And um, yeah, we, uh, we did some um, nice uh, property hunting. And as I said, in Barcelos, this, uh, this new project. So uh, yeah, a lot of uh, good new, inspiration and uh, also a lot of new energy that's why you think uh, i'm looking this young today <laughs> and it's the it's the you can guess his age if you like everybody we could reveal that towards the end of the presentation um, but uh, jeresh of course where wolves i think were recently spotted amazing part of the country but you're back at home and you're in Pedrogo grande which is in yeah. i thought it was in castelo branco uh, district as in, in central yep. portugal but you're in leria district aren't you in yeah. It's um, yeah, we are in the north of the uh, Lairia district, mm -hmm. so just um, half an hour or maybe 40 minutes south of, uh, of Coimbra. It's uh, very central, and uh, for us, it's really ideal as we travel a lot through, uh, through the country. Um, after tomorrow, so Saturday, we, uh, we are going to visit uh, a project in Elvash, which is in the uh, Alentejo. And from there we travel, uh, we continue to travel to, uh, to the Algarve. So for us being uh, in the middle of the country is really ideal as we, uh, yeah, we can reach out to, uh, to all the regions. Uh, um, logistically, it's, uh, it's a good location. And also because we love it being here, it's, it's beautiful. And I think we had this uh, conversation already quite a few times. And um, yeah, it's still a very authentic part of Portugal, which is um, for me one of the, the reasons as well to, uh, to, to, he to be here and to, to love it here. It's, it's really nice. It's still uh, very, uh, very Portugal. Yep, absolutely. And I think as far as golden visas go, it's in the lower bracket as well, isn't it? It's a remarkable property you can find yep. uh, in central yep. Portugal there. Yeah, it's called the. Uh, it's one of the uh, low density uh, areas, as uh, as it's called in the uh, in the visa uh, criteria. Yeah, superb. Okay, that's worth knowing. I think. All right, Peter. So, if if you wouldn't mind um, sharing your presentation with us, gives gives us an introduction to you and the work you do, uh, and then we'll take um, questions from everybody thereafter. All right. So I prepared a couple of slides, and um, it's just a few to uh, to make. Uh, make it clear how we work and also a little bit of, um, of our uh, uh, fees. 
because I'm Dutch and I want to be very transparent as uh, some of you <laughs> already know. And um, so that, um, that I thought it was good to, uh, good to start it from here. So the Portugal company, Realizing Dreams, that's our uh, company name. And um, our normal way of working, and I'm saying normal because, well, there is not a very standardized uh, way of working, but I try, I've tried to, um, to put it in a couple of uh, 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 chapters. So, of course, there's always a kind of first of point of contact via email or after this, uh, this uh, webinar with Experts Portugal. Um, then we um, have a couple of uh, emails and uh, that normally ends up in a, uh, in a call of 30 minutes. And it's a free call, but uh, the 30 minutes uh, most of the times will, uh, will be 45 or 60 or whatsoever minutes. That's really uh, um, how we work. So it's a call like today with Zoom or Skype or any other video uh, meeting. And it's really about uh, your uh, questions. It's not uh, telling me how we work, but it's really a dedicated uh, a session on your plans and dreams of moving uh, to Portugal. I said this call is, uh, is free. And from there, we try to uh, define, and uh, again, that's also a very custom-made thing, uh, based upon uh, your ideas and uh, dreams, a, a personal plan. And with this personal plan in, uh, in hand, um, you can use it as a guide to, uh, to further planning and uh, uh, purchasing property here in Portugal. We uh, charge 99 uh, euros for that plan. And as I said, it's, it's really a custom-made plan uh, based on your uh, preferences on property or the, uh, the climate or the culture that you're looking for. So it's not only focusing on property, but also uh, all the, uh, how can I say, all the things around it, like the region, the cities. Some people are really keen to know more on public transport or on schooling. So that's things that we normally work in in this uh, custom-made uh, plan. Um, from there, of course, we uh, start um, looking on properties and normally it's, um, it's a uh, combined effort with, with our clients because um, I think I can say for sure that most of you already are looking at uh, all kind of platforms, of course, like Idealista, Green Acres and, and the other ones to see what you can get and what, um, yeah, what property uh, you can find in your preferred region. Um, we work together to narrow this list down to, let's say, maybe 10, 12 or whatever uh, properties. And um, then we look into uh, each of these, uh, really making sure to uh, connect with, uh, with the agent or even better directly with the, uh, with the current owner of the property to make sure that uh, everything uh, you see on um, on the internet and on those pictures is really legally built, uh, also owned by the people that are saying that are the owner, uh, because that's also sometimes an, an issue here in Portugal. Uh, we have a closer look on the neighborhood because a picture can um, can convince you easily, but if you then don't see what's next to it or um, what the, the neighborhood looks like, that can be a, a big bummer, of course. So that's something we uh, we um, very in in the early process work in as well, um, and um, this will more or less cost 25 euros per property, and then you will get a, a report of about yeah depends a bit on on the type of property, but uh, normally it's about two to three uh, A4 pages, uh, really detailed info on uh, on the property. And with that, we um, we then have we can make a real short list on uh, the properties that really make sense to uh, to to view. Um, normally, we can set up viewings. Um, uh, normally, we we do three a day. Maybe if things are really close together, it can be four or even five. Depends a bit on on the region and and travel here. Um, we charge 250 euros for uh, for a full day of these uh, viewings, 
And um, the price, uh, the 250 euros, is uh, later on deductible from the uh, final uh, buyer support fees in case you uh, decide to, uh, to work with us on, uh, on the purchase. Um, if that's the case, if you really, after those viewings, select one property, we then work uh, on the uh, buyer support, uh, as we call it. Um, depending a bit on timing and on the scale of the project, uh, we can decide, but it's always uh, a mutual decision with, uh, with you as a client to uh, ask you a starting fee, um, just to make sure that we are really investing our energy and our effort in the right, uh, in the right projects. So that's a bit the, as I, as I call it, our way of working and all the stages that we normally uh, work through. But sometimes, to be honest, um, people reach out and they already went through a couple of these phases themselves and then we only uh, work with them on the buyer support. So it's, it's, it's just to give you a overview of uh, what we can do. Uh, we also can uh, jump in uh, in the middle or just at the end, but sometimes um, uh, we, we start at the really early beginning and then this is, uh, this is the overview of all the steps we, uh, we uh, normally take with you. Um, there's this slide as well. As I said, it's about buyer support. Huh? Then um, the setup is like this. We, we charge 1% of the purchase price with a minimum of uh, 2,500 euros. Um, we also can do the uh, negotiations on your behalf. And if we do so, we, uh, we charge you 10% of the savings. So that's the difference between the asking price, the listing price, and the, uh, um, the final purchase price. And uh, depending a bit on the regions, the, the difference can be quite, uh, quite, a, quite a bit. Um, we also can organize technical inspections. People sometimes uh, opt to buy old quintas, which really look very uh, lovely on pictures, but then it's really good to, uh, to make sure that you have a technical inspection uh, as well. Uh, we offer legal support. We are not lawyers ourselves, but we have a network of, uh, of lawyers and even uh, fiscalists that can advise you what's the best way to, um, yeah, to go forward with the, uh, with the legal or the fiscal part here. Uh, sometimes we also are asked if we can um, uh, manage um, a, a loan or a mortgage via Portuguese bank. Uh, yes, we can. We work together with a, um, I call her the pit bull. It's, uh, it's a lady, it's a broker in, in Lisbon, and she's really uh, aggressive in the, in the good way, I should say. And she, uh, she can get very uh, uh, good rates and good, uh, also uh, in terms of efficiency, uh, good projects running. Portuguese banks nowadays, but I think we will uh, we will get there in uh, maybe in, in the Q and A later on. Um, are really keen to um, to help foreigners to invest here in Portugal. Uh, interest rates are historically low. That's not a surprise because it's not only the case here in Portugal, of course. But uh, yeah, that's something we um, we can talk a little bit about later on if uh, if you want. But it can be very uh, very interesting. Um, furthermore, we, we can organize um, all the documentation, um, so not only around the property, but also, for example, the, the fiscal number or the NIF, um, setting up bank accounts, uh, also after the purchase, help you with uh, moving to the right uh, electricity company, having gas, water, maybe internet installed, that kind of, uh, call it after service uh, 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 things. Um, then again, in the green, um, in the green overview, it's a bit about. Um, okay, now I think I already touched upon this: the NIF and the residency. Yeah, that's what we can do with uh, with our uh, network, with people from uh, from the network to uh, to make sure we can link you to uh, the right fiscal and legal people. Uh, rental support is also something we, uh, we, we can do. A lot of people decide before they uh, buy property in Portugal 
to first uh, settle down in, in, in a region for maybe three or six months. So we also can help uh, with finding the right uh, apartment or whatever you, uh, you are looking for. Make sure that the contracts and uh, the agreements are all in, uh, in place. So that's a bit what we, um, what we do and uh, how we work in terms of uh, all the uh, different stages and uh, a bit about the, uh, the financial structure. Uh, thank you, Peter. That's great. And you, you use the royal we there. I think we should mention uh, your partner, Elise, um, who is the Portuguese speaker in the past. Yes. Tell us a bit more about Elise. Yeah, well, um, Alice and I met in 2000, so 20 something years ago here in Lisbon, or not here in Lisbon, but in Lisbon, uh, when I was uh, still um, a bit younger, and Alice as well, to be honest. And um, we always um, had a passion for, uh, for property and for Portugal when it comes to, to culture, nature, but also food and wines. And um, we, in, we decided in 2005 to invest uh, ourselves in, uh, in Portugal. Back then uh, in, um, in the lovely neighborhood Castelo, the castle of, of Lisbon on the highest hill in, um, in Lisbon, overlooking the city and the, and the river. We bought a very small studio for ourselves and um, we still have it and sometimes we uh, we we are thinking to uh, to sell it but because we are not there a lot of time anymore to be honest but it's so nice that we think we'll uh, we'll get very old there um but you have to do in a castle right yeah. and um so alice is the portuguese part of um, of the team um, she speaks Portuguese, but even more important, she, uh, she really knows how to deal with, uh, with all the parts of the uh, Portuguese bureaucracy, um, really make sure that, uh, that all the paperwork and that all the questions that you and that we have are answered in, um, in a good amount of time. And uh, yeah, so we work together, we live together, we travel together. And um, I think we, um, yeah, we are a small team, but uh, we are very flexible and we want to keep things um, very small and personal. I think that's um, good for everyone here to, uh, to know. So we are not a big company. Uh, of course, we are very ambitious people, but not when it comes to, um, to building a big company. We want to run... Um, as much as nice projects, but um, yeah, we want to have a click with the people that we work for. And um, yeah, I'm not saying we have to fall in love with the property that you um, are <laughs> aiming to buy, but it helps if you know what I mean. We really want to uh, yeah, get best things um, uh, for you. And um, yeah, I really can say Alice is, uh, is really making sure as the Portuguese part of the team, that, uh, that we can uh, manage that. Okay, brilliant. So no offers on the house in, uh, or the, the apartment in Lisbon by the side of it tonight, but um, King Peter of the castle, uh, Queen Alice and the Pitbull. What a combination uh, that yeah. we're encountering. Yeah. <laughs> she sounds like quite something, uh, your, your uh, mortgage lady. Um, so I think you've silenced everybody. Get those questions coming in folks uh, for Peter. And um, we are saying good evening to Texas tonight, South Africa, uh, a Riyadh, Saudi, where it's 47 degrees at the moment. If you wow. spot where you are, check it out. In Saudi, it's 47. Uh, South Dakota, North Carolina, of course. Always somebody from North Carolina on any expats Portugal event. Uh, Baltimore, Vancouver, New Mexico. Uh, Nazare here in Portugal. Arizona. Anna's here, of course, in Cascais. Uh, Cabanas as well, represented tonight um, in Portugal. A uh, legendary Anadia, uh, not well known, but legendary Anadia in Portugal. New Jersey, New York, California, Idaho, Colorado, Delaware, Maastricht, New Orleans, Finland, Salamanca in Spain, all here tonight. Connecticut and Titchfield, UK, of course. And, and last but not least, Melanie, family of five, recently here on the D7, looking for somewhere to live. So you come to the right place tonight, Melanie and family. Uh, let us know where you are specifically in Portugal, but congratulations on being here. Um, let's have a look then. Any questions uh, for Peter? Excellent. They're coming in already. That's fantastic. Thank you very much indeed. Um, I think we, did we establish that you cover the Algarve? You do cover the, cover the Algarve, don't you, Peter? 
Yeah, we do. We do. Actually, as I said um, earlier, we are traveling there next Monday. So, uh, yes, we do. We do. Okay, that's fantastic. Uh, sorry if we missed it, says Armando. Will you also email the PDF of the presentation? So presumably that's available if people want it. Maybe they should reach out to you and drop your line. Yeah, sure. Happy to share it. All right, fantastic. How much of this can be done remotely? That's a fantastic question and a contemporary question, of course, from Sherry. Thank you, Sherry, for that. So in, in, a, in a relationship of this kind, how much of it are you able to do remotely, Peter? Uh, it's a very um, simple question. All of it. Okay. Um, actually, just before we started this webinar, um, I got the, the go from a client to buy um, an apartment in the north where we were uh, the last couple of days. We are finalizing a uh, deal um, uh, in, in the middle of the country in uh, lovely Lausanne, which is uh, also close to Coimbra. So we can do it completely remote. Um, yeah, so um, I was, to be very honest with you, Carl, I was very surprised that it's, um, that it's possible, but it is, it is, it's yeah. possible. And it's needs must also at this time in human history on planet Earth, right, and with restrictions and so on. But that's amazing. So you've done a, a complete sold unseen by the buyer, but you've been yeah. managed, managed to, to manage the whole process there. Yeah, well, they, they, they have seen it because we have showed them around with video calls and, yeah. uh, of course, but, uh, well, unseen in terms of they, they haven't been here in person. Yeah. No feet on the ground. Amazing. Okay, what a service. Uh, Cynthia says, since I'm starting out renting, could you comment on rental support fees? So you help people uh, find rentals as well as buying properties, of course. Yeah, we do. Uh, sometimes it's the objective of people to uh, to rent. Uh, otherwise, uh, sometimes people uh, first want to uh, to rent for a couple of months just to make sure that they are um, uh, choosing the right region. So we also have set up a couple of rentals, let's say three months in the center, three months uh, closer to Lisbon, three months uh, in the Algarve. So yeah, that's uh, also what we uh, we can do. Yeah. Tremendous. Okay. Um, duplexes. I'm not sure I know what that is, but uh, Susan says, my brother and I are interested in duplexes. Are there such properties in Portugal? Is that where it's like a, a single dwelling, but it's split into two or one above the other? What's a duplex, Peter? I think it's, yeah, it's just what you're mentioning, Carl. It's uh, it's an apartment or a flat, if you call it like that, with, with two floors, right? Yeah. So it's... Um, yeah, normally it's uh, based on the top floor of um, of the uh, of the buildings. Uh, yeah, they they are um, for sale. So uh, yeah, sure. Isn't okay. Maisonette that might have been called in England, if I remember mm -hmm. rightly. Oh, okay. Uh, what are the time frames here from Irene? Uh, for, from the go, I mean, this is you know obviously going to vary from from property to property, situation to situation. But just ballpark, what are the time frames for negotiation? To close it to closing and if it helps this is a cash purchase would that speed things up yeah that speeds things up um, um, a lot because imagine if you have a bank involved they uh, they really scrutinize on on all the documents which is very good but um, it takes time so from negotiating to closing a deal well um, maybe two months that's uh, if it's a cash, a cash purchase, yeah, maybe yeah. something like that. There's a guy also, depending on documentation, but uh, well, if everything is 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 there, then it can be it can be done. Yeah. Tremendous. All right, guide for you there, Irene, on that. Uh, Melanie, yeah, who's here with the family on the D7? We're staying in San Martin de Porto. Brilliant, great time of year <laughs> to be there. Kids signed up for school in Marina Grande and Junsal. So somewhere in between hunting for a rental until we're settled to buy a home. And I'll, I'll roll this into the next question as well, Peter. Looking yep. to purchase a home in the Silver Coast area, of course, where San Martino de Porto is. New modern style, anything we should know, anything we should know about buying a new build. So... Um, Silver Coast, I'd like your overview on that. That's where I live now, uh, since I last no. you, I moved to the Silver Coast. But what's your view on the Silver Coast in, in sharing um, all the various parts of Portugal with people? Yeah, it's, 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 it's lovely. It's very nice. Uh, I've been to Caldas Rainha last week before oh, really? we uh, drove up north. Yes, it's, it's nice. 
especially now. Let's be honest with uh, with the uh, with the lovely beaches. Yeah. Um, my view on it, yeah, it's 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 a very um, interesting place in terms of um, logistics. It's very close to um, to the international airport of, of Lisbon, depending a bit uh, where you are in the Silver Coast. But it's uh, 45 minutes more or less. There are international schools. So it's really interesting for family uh, families with uh, with young kids. Um, as I said, great beaches, um, but also a lot of uh, culture. Um, Obidos, uh, Batalha, Alcobasa. Well, I think there are. I've counted them in about or more or less about nine or so UNESCO World Heritage sites within one hour drive. So that's amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. lovely, yeah. I, I like it. Um, one, maybe one downside, but correct me if I'm wrong, Carl. But I try to be mm -hmm. honest. Sometimes in the morning it can be a little bit foggy, uh, also in in winter time. But well, hey, um, if that's um, the only thing I can think of, then um, you're uh, you're all very good, I think. Absolutely, and 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 this was pointed out to me. It's kind of obvious. It's not called the Silver Coast for no reason. That's that's no. the mistiness that's being described there. It's not because of the hair color of most of the people who live here. Um, it is it is the Silver Coast for that reason, and and it can be a bit foggy and misty of a morning, but that soon burns off, especially at this time of year. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful at the moment, and. I was talking to a real estate agent uh, a couple of days ago uh, in Kaldash, and I said, this is becoming a bit of an American hotspot, isn't it? I'm, I'm, I'm hearing American accents a lot when I'm around town. And he said, yeah, absolutely. So you might want to factor that in. If you want American expats around you, um, good place to look at. You might not. So there might be a place to avoid. I don't know. But I'm just telling you what I've heard. Um, and I'm, that's aimed equally at Americans there listening tonight. Um, so a new modern buildings... Uh, what should we know about new builds? Things to be said, right, about old Portuguese buildings and the newer buildings. What, what do you have a preference in this area, or things people people should watch out for? Especially in the in the Silver Coast, or in general? We can generalize this. I think we can generalize mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Yeah, I think we can. Um, well, yeah, it's it's not about my preference, right? I have a preference for old Quintash with a lot of charm, but. Let's be honest. They come with some maintenance and some um, some history, right? Uh, new builds, yeah. It's it's interesting. I think in um, in in let's say five or ten years time, the quality of uh, of building uh, increased uh, a lot. Yesterday, as I said, we were meeting in Barcelos about a new built uh, apartment and uh, also townhouses uh, project. Very interesting, high quality, uh, still relatively uh, affordable. So, but it depends. It really depends. You really have to be very, very um, careful with who is building it and also the financial part. If you have to finance it yourself, for example, and it's only ready in two and a half years from now, that can be a bit painful. So that's that in terms of quality, you need really to look out for high quality builds and also be very uh, careful with, uh, with the timing and, and how to finance it. Um, that's something uh, I can say about it. Yeah, very good. Excellent. Um, OK, so moving to um, uh, homes where there is a homeowners association and obviously going to find this in a kind of condominium setup. Thanks for this, Tammy, uh, who would like to avoid uh, homeowner and condo associations and you get this of course in in, in the classical um, apartment blocks of Lisbon and Porto and the big cities you're going to face something of this kind but we're considering purchasing a detached house we also have seen several terraced houses and villas do these types of homes also have a homeowner associations or something similar so first part of that um, you can, I, we can understand why people might want to avoid homeowner associations and all the meetings and costs and decision making processes What's that like in Portugal, in your experience, the, the, uh, the headaches or not of, of being in a homeowners or a collective for the building? Uh, we have some very, well, very good, I would say very okay um, um, experiences and also some bad. It depends really on, on also here the quality of the building and the project. Um, you can imagine if, if you are buying an apartment in, in a very old block in, um, in uh, downtown Porto or Lisbon, 
yeah, you also can um, expect some issues with the condominium. Um, but also there, I think things are improving very rapidly. Uh, if I com compare it with uh, with the Netherlands, with my hometown, with my uh, yeah hometown over there, it's well, it's it's the same there. I mean, it's it's all over the place. You have uh, some issues with uh, with build and with the quality, and some people want to invest heavily in. Uh, in uh, painting it every two years some people don't they only want to paint it every 20 years well you know the the normal thing so i think it's not really a specific uh portuguese uh, issue yeah okay but i guess that you do a bit of due diligence uh, maybe ask maybe knock on some doors and ask and get the, yeah. The, yeah 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 what goes on in that particular situation and peter can do that for you of course um and then with these terraced houses and villas that, that are joined together does that mean that all houses that are joined together will have some sort of homeowners association or, or, or are there all kinds of different kinds of relationships and setups with this? No, I think with, with when, when they are really built together in a, in a kind of small, call it project, there has to be some of a homeowners association. It's a different, uh, well, the, the legal structure is the same as within a big apartment block. But if you are only with four or maybe 10 or so homeowners, it's, it's different. Communication is more easily, more informal, um, rather than with these big apartment buildings, right? But yeah. I think there, well, if it's really built together in the same uh, project, then there is 90% of the, of the cases, there is a home, uh, homeowners association. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, uh, uh, Tammy, if you want to avoid it, you, you're doing the right thing considering detached. And if you are going into that situation, yeah, d get your due diligence on what's going on there or, or ask Peter to do that for you. Uh, Lois, what is the residency requirement before buying real estate? So you don't have to be a resident here, clearly from your earlier answer, um, to, to own a home here. No, you don't. Um, you, you can... Um, Nowadays, a lot of people combine it, buying property and getting a residency, but you, you don't. You can buy a property um, uh, while you're still a resident, also a fiscal resident in another part of, um, of Europe or even outside Europe. Yeah, yeah. So you can you can apply for the right to pay tax in Portugal without living here. They're not turning they're not turning that offer down, are they? Which you'll need to do if you buy a house here. Okay, uh, from Tim. Hi, Peter. Looking forward for uh, looking for a six month rental in the Caldas area. Whilst we Silver Coast, all about Silver Coast tonight. Uh, we search for a permanent home in the general area. Looking in Marina Grande and Mira. Uh, that's a bit further north, isn't it, Peter? Lots of uh, viewings next week, but the rental is the most pressing. Suffice to say, I think Peter can help you with that, Tim, if you get in touch. Uh, Gary asks, I have VS, VFS appointment here in San Francisco in 10 days. Good luck with that, Gary. But I've not secured an apartment. Having difficulties getting a landlord to write a contract now mm -hmm. that won't start until October, November. Yeah, interesting. I've lost three apartments to people who want to start the contract right away. Do you have a suggestion? Can we get around that? Wow. Yeah, that, that's, that's uh, uh, um, an issue with the D7 that we... Um we um, are very familiar with a lot of um, people are running into that um, nowadays or not nowadays I should say but this time of the year summer so people really want to um, to um, have short-term rentals in place rather than uh, a six or even 12 months uh, rental so depending on the um, on the region it can be hard maybe it's just, um, yeah, thinking out loud here. Maybe it can help if you try to find something in a more or in a lower dense uh, area where the demand is, uh, is different. That might help. Um, feel free to, uh, to drop me an email. Maybe we, uh, we can um, yeah, look into the more specifics of, uh, of your question uh, and take it from there. All right. Talking of which, Peter, what's the best email address to get you on? It's a support at theportugalcompany.com. 
Fantastic. Okay, that's a good laterally thought out suggestion, I think, there for you, Gary. Uh, but get in touch uh, for, for more ideas on that. Great idea, Peter. Thank you. Uh, Colin, thanks, Colin. Do you do properties that are part built or off plan? I mean, you made a reference to this earlier on, Peter, about uh, po possibly the pitfalls of buying something that's not um, built yet. But you've got experience with that by the sound of it. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we do. We, uh, and and it's, a, it's kind of a specific, um, how can I say, specific tragic or how can I say uh, so the, the, the timelines and these uh, the, the payment the down payments and some things are completely different so um, also if you want to have a, a bank involved for for a mortgage which is possible um, yeah that are things that we really can help with and we can uh, can look into it yeah okay so talking of mortgages Susan asks can you get a 10-year mortgage or can the pit bull get a 10-year mortgage yeah, you can. You can. Well, depends on your age, but um, yeah, it's uh, it's not a problem at all. Uh, actually, we um, we have secured some mortgages uh, the last couple of months for um, people that are not as young as um, as they look like, if you know what I mean. So banks are really open uh, nowadays here in Portugal, um, and um, yeah, it's no problem. It's also very interesting if you look into the into the rates um bpi and this is not uh, me uh, talking uh, or advertising something but there are very good uh, banks uh, offering a fixed and flexible uh, interest rates which are surprisingly low mm -hmm. well good to know excellent all right um, one of the one of the uh, upsides i suppose of, of um, un economic uncertainty at the moment um, this is a great nitty gritty question from Kent. Thanks, Kent, for this. What is the average saving on the negotiated price when you get in there and do the deal, Peter? Normally, it's about fifty percent. Five zero. No, joking. No, uh, it, it's yeah. Well, <laughs> you got me. You totally got me there. I was listening. <laughs> Between fifty and seventy-five. No, it's it's there. I can't. It's really depending on on a location in the Algarve. It's different in in Lisbon. It's different. Let me put it like this: in the area where we are, so in, in the interior of the country, in the lower dense areas, um, I think you. Um, well, it's also not always the case. Huh? It's, but my gut feel says, in uh, lower dense areas, you you can make. A, a better deal in terms of of savings but yeah. also there it's it's not for sure yeah I, I, and i think it's fair to say isn't it that you, you know you, you just don't stand the same sort of chance on getting a discount by applying by email from america or england inquiring about this property it's like the, <laughs> the energy changes doesn't it i like the look of your property and i'm writing from america or england how much yeah. is it please and I think, you know, vendors are just, oh, okay, yeah, uh, add another, you know, premium or something. And you, of course, uh, Peter and Alice are going to see right through that. I go to the, again, the nitty gritty of it and just get realistic uh, with the vendor, right? Yeah, and it, yeah, it's, it's re it really makes a difference if you pick up the phone and you talk to an agent or directly to the owner in Portuguese yeah. and immediately start asking uh it's not nasty questions, but you know what I mean? All the details about all the doc documents, if the pool is legal, if this edX or the studio is legal, yeah. all these things, because that makes a world of difference. And um, yeah, I'm not saying it will work uh, in 100% of the cases, of course not, but well, it, it really uh, can uh, help you big time. And, and you make a really good point there, Peter, because it's not about just about the money you save. It's about the heartache and stress that you save as well, isn't it, in having an intermediary yeah. who speaks yeah. Portuguese. The atmosphere, the energy changes completely when they know that they're dealing with somebody who knows the territory in a way that mm -hmm. there are things you won't know, Kent, um, just by you know buying something that you like the look of online for sure so excellent thank you for asking that question and thank you for, for that answer peter uh what, what other this often comes up doesn't it for us uh tim and susan thank you for this what are the taxes on new home purchase at the time of purchase uh specifically on new builds or on well let's do both let's do all scenarios so they don't say on this particular question yeah well uh, it, it 
there is one um, thing if you, for example, buy a property which is in a area which is um, considered a um, part of a town, for example, in well, in most of the old towns you have these areas. It's called uh, Aru. Uh, there you can uh, get um, exemption of um, of paying tax, the IMT, the uh, the, the tax on the uh, transaction, which yeah. can be. Well, it depends because it's a little bit a, a progressive scale. So the, the higher the purchase price, the more, uh, the higher the percentage goes. Um, so that can be very interesting. But in general, you have to count with, uh, with two types of taxes. First is the uh, IS, that's the stamp duty. That's yeah. a fixed rate of 0.8% uh, over the purchase price. And you have the IMT. Yeah. Uh, that's this transaction tax. Um, yeah, there, there you have this progressive uh, scale. Mm -hmm. um, so property lower than I think it's, I think it's seventy thousand euros. They are exempt of paying this tax. But starting from this number, you you have to pay about five, six or so percent tax over the purchase price. Okay. Um, that's a one-time tax, so um, yeah, you have to uh, take that into account, and um, that's uh, something. Well, as I said, with 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 renovated houses in old part of towns, you you might have an exemption on that. Okay, that's good to know. Thank you for that. So there you go, Tim and Susan. Uh, Elise here. Is it common for property owners to allow subletting? That is, if I lease on first arrival then find somewhere else to purchase. Can I um, apply to sublet? So I guess that's passing on the lease to someone else. Do you ever, do you ever hear of that to, to help people get out of, a, of a, an unnecessary expense there? Uh, yes, I think legally there is, as far as I know, but again, I'm not a lawyer, but as far as I know, there is nothing in the law that uh, holds you. But of course you have to have the... Uh, um you have to talk about it with the landlord right yeah of course and that in that and that's something worth bearing in mind right from the start isn't it is yeah. this is this a person i can talk to i yeah. mean yeah. Phys physically at all are they accessible are they available but then are they do they come across as a decent human being who might be able to cope with these sorts of changes uh, that you've spoken about there elise i think that's a really important thing and generally i think that is the case you know the latter situation is the case in portugal uh, where, where you're going to find uh, people are being a little bit more um, generous and open-minded with situations than you might elsewhere um, Josephine, this is a great question, and I think this is becoming more popular and common, certainly as, as a question, and I think as a reality. Are there rent-to-buy possibilities? The question she asked you, are there possibilities to rent and buy it later? Are you finding more and more of this? Is this something you're, you're negotiating with people at all? Yeah, we do, uh, although it's still not something that is really common here in Portugal. So from, the, um, from our clients, we... Uh, more and more get this question if that's possible yeah. but uh, to be honest we were looking um, over the last couple of weeks for property buy and lease in um, in the area of Caldas de Rainha. it's very very complicated yeah people still prefer to uh, to close a, a, a deal and and sell it uh, right away yeah, of course. That's understandable, isn't it? Yeah, uh, it is. But yeah. yeah, well, on the other hand, if you, um, well, uh, if you have something um, you can't um, sell right away, it's it's also for the uh, actual owner a very good proposition, right? Of course. And again, I think it comes down to whether you, you're dealing with someone you can have a, a conversation with of that kind. Um, and, I, and, I, and this is where I've heard about it is it's often an offer made uh, by private landlords, you know, who say, oh, if you like it, you might want to buy it a bit later on. There's always there's always that sort of conversation going on or well, not always, but 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 often. Um, Susan, uh, do the duplexes, Maisonettes generally have separate meters for water and electricity? I'd say yes. I don't know what your your answer would be on that, Peter. You, you, you can get a new you can get an, a, a separate meter put installed anyway, can't you? If the conditions are favorable. I don't know, to be honest. It's it's really something very specific that you need to check with uh, with uh, with the building. So I don't know. 
Okay, fair play. Um, although we could afford to pay cash uh, when we put purchase a home, says Melanie, uh, we would prefer to finance and take advantage of the low interest rates. Uh, we are officially retired and have no income specifically. Um, would banks here in Portugal consider financing in this situation or do we need to show actual income? That's an interesting situation. No, they, they, they are open to, uh, to finance as well. Yeah. Of course, you have to show some funding, um, depending on the type of property, the age, uh, and a couple of other criteria. They can decide to finance, for example, up to 50% or up to 70. And then the, the rule is then that you have the other part in, um, in your bank account, not in your Portuguese bank account, but somewhere in, can be the UK or in the US or in, in my bank account. But uh, you know what I mean? You have to prove that you are good for, uh, for the other part. Uh, they are very open. We, um, yeah, every time, as I uh, said, we are, we are still very surprised with the, uh, uh, it's not the easiness, but let's call it the openness to, um, to, um, yeah, to have mortgages. Again. One, one, one um, downside there is, but I think that's, that's also the case in, uh, in all our countries. They really ask you, um, to send in uh, a million of documents. So everything you can think of, you have to scan and send. And then after a couple of months, they are asking uh, more, more recent uh, salary statements, bank statements, whatever. So it's sometimes a, a, a big process, but in the end, it's, it's really, um, really interesting due to the low interest rates. Yeah, be ready for that just generally in Portugal. Um, I signed an insurance policy, uh, health insurance last week. I thought that was it. And I, I got an email today. And it was like, would you mind printing and signing the, uh, I think you're like eight PDFs attached to it. This is this is what, what goes on here. I just, I mean, and that's the advice and it be ready for it. it, it, it this, this, this does happen in Portugal, bit of form filling and, and, and a chance to practice your autograph. Um, so that's that's for you, Melanie. Uh, this is a great question connected to mortgages. What's the minimum deposit that you're experiencing at the moment, Peter? Um, wow, uh, the minimum. Um, yeah, sometimes they they are open to make a 90 10 uh, deal. So then it's a uh, 10%. 10%. Okay. But again, that's not something um, which is common. It's really something that it, it's really custom made work by the banks, not by only by us, but the banks in this case, yeah. they, they uh, do an evaluation of the property. And of course, they want to know everything about your financial uh, situation and of your partner if you're, uh, if you're married. Um, but well, that, that can be, um, I think, more or less the minimum. Okay. Um, Tammy, t thanks for that. Uh, Tammy is saying, I was ready to send Peter money immediately for a 50% saving. You had everybody's attention. At yeah. That point, Peter. I'll, I'll, um, <laughs> um, I'll just work in my, um, my in bank uh, details in the presentation to show around, right? He's always going to say that in his presentations now. Um, <laughs> And Anna, this is great. Thank you. A, a, a typical Anna Vieira from Kashkaish, uh, part of our Ask Our Expats team with a great to side note here. Uh, to sublease, you have to include that possibility in the contract. So that's worth talking about, isn't it? Get that sorted out at the beginning whilst you're negotiating uh, rather than worry about it later down the line. Uh, Lauren, understanding this hashtag all the documentation equals Portugal life. They've been here only, I think, three or four weeks, and but they know that already. Um, Cynthia, can you speak to buying a property for use as an Airbnb? Uh, for example, letting a suite in a home or apartment, anything specific to look out for? So any clients who've gone on to do Airbnbs, Peter? Yeah, a lot, a lot. Um, talking at the moment with... Um with a client who wants to invest in um, a property in Lisbon to um, just to, yeah, just to get some return on investment. Um, others want to um, change life and they want to move from uh, whatever to, um, to Portugal, live in a very nice area in a Quinta and uh, um, have some extra income next to, um, to the already low cost in, in Portugal to, to let and to rent out uh, uh, rooms or 
even the the full house yeah yeah great news okay and tune in next tuesday to the good morning portugal show our old friend frank um has just uh, secured a property uh, in portimao and he's going to be talking about the process that he and uh, wife rachel went through um to turn that to get the license you need the al a logement local license uh, for such activities and they're letting it out as airbnb and he's going to be telling me all about it on tuesday morning so tune in then and um armando asks uh, does owning a property give you any access to government benefits so I, i'm guessing that's a question about grants and so on uh, in that sense of government benefits um anna's saying uh, armando the benefit is paying taxes i don't think armando means the benefit to the government i think <laughs> armando means the benefit to the buyer um so are there any grants available or anything once you're buying property in portugal Cool. Yes, there are. Oh, okay, cool. That's good news. Yeah, depending also here, depending on the on the location, but um, the region, for example, I know very well the center center of Portugal, Centro de Portugal, is really keen on having uh, more tourism, and um, so there are lots of um, of uh, possibilities. Um, it's, it's, I think, a very nice topic to, uh, to do a, a next show on, Carl. No, um, seriously, there are lots of grants and lots of, um, of um, okay. programs. With, uh, and also, for example, if you already have uh, secured a property, if you want to improve it or you want to um, rebuild uh, a part of it or you want to uh, regenerate a part of the, of the forest or your garden, there are... A lot of uh, very interesting um, uh, grants from the government. Okay, that's good to know. And, and we could probably roll that together with um, the renovation special uh, that we have in mind because they would go hand, to, hand in hand. So that could be pretty good, um, a webinar of that kind. I think Jerry and Astrid will be making notes there on that. And um, yeah, Carl, slight change of topic, but do you know about the water shortages in, in northern Algarve? Uh, I don't, but I'll pick that up for the morning show. We'll look into that. Thanks for that, uh, Jeff. And I think Armando was talking about, okay, benefits from being a homeowner. Would that stand you in better stead for getting things like health insurance as an asset, I suppose? Does that make, does that make any sense, Peter? Um, I'm not sure if I understand this question. Well, I think what, maybe what's behind that is if your house is an asset, would you get a better discount on health insurance? But I don't think there is that kind of discrimination against people um, according no. to their property no, owners are not in Portugal. And, and health insurance is astoundingly good value compared to uh, um, North America, if that's what you mean there. Um, to, uh, and Anna adds, to access public health services here, you do not need to have a property either. So, yeah, that's another way of, of looking at it. Uh, Tim and Susan, in the US, it is a seller's market based on low supply high demand and low interest rates is it a buyer or seller's market now in portugal specifically silver coast and algarve areas i think we should probably take that as our final question for this part and and speak more generally if you will peter about how the property market is in portugal at the moment because you know contrary to a lot of uh, predictions and and um, sort of doom mongering it's pretty good in Portugal, it has to be said, right? Despite the pandemic, the, the, the market has not been crushed. Um, it's very healthy. It's all looking very good. But would, would you close this particular part of the webinar with, with a view on that? Yeah, sure. I think um, we all kind of uh, anticipated something like a, a decrease in, uh, in prices of, of real estate and property here in Portugal mm -hmm. due to COVID or due to uh, crisis in general. But so far, so good. I think, um, to use your words, Carl, it's it's a very healthy uh, market. And um, of course, what you uh, saw, for example, after, uh, let's say, last summer uh, or yeah, in the autumn of uh, 2020, the, the prices in in the historic centers of Porto and um, and and Lisbon dropped a bit. But nothing really special. And mm -hmm. what we see, on the other hand, is uh, a lot of demand for property um, in more low, lower dense areas. The uh, uh, not sorry, not the Algarve, but but the Alentejo is really well. It's I was saying is getting hot, and it is literally. But a lot of demand for a property in um, in the Alentejo, which uh, which of course. Um, has a lot of uh, space and a lot of air and well there 
prices there are very uh, very interesting. So no, no, not not a lot of sign um, of uh, decreasing prices. Uh, I think it's um, it's it's still affordable in um, to invest in property in um, in Portugal, especially if you compare it with. Um, with other uh, European uh, countries like France or like um, like Spain, um, and yeah, what we, we what we see is that there is still a, a lot of good return on investment here. Superb, great to know. Um, just an, another little side, and adding to the taxes is, is the IS, the IMT, and year on year you're paying the IMI as well, aren't you? As your ongoing uh, tax as the house owner, house owners pay that, not renters interestingly as well here in portugal peter that's been an amazing hour thank you so much find peter and alice in, in in our business directory under the portugal company anything else you'd like to say before we um stop the recording and go to a more general uh, open q a no i just want to say uh, thank you again for for having me here tonight and uh most importantly, thank you to, uh, to all the participants and all the great questions. Uh, really looking forward to, um, to meet you via email or to set up an individual Zoom call or whatever we, uh, we, we can help you with. So uh, thanks, Carl. Thanks, uh, Gary and uh, Astrid. And um, open for um, some more questions, I would say. Marvelous. Let's leave it there for now for the recording. Thanks, Peter. Thank you.